Cologne, Frankfurt was down. Uh, the Zetradax, the Cat Caron, they were all down one and a half or so, one and a quarter percent. But it was Milan that gave everybody a shock. Coming off a two to three percent fall yesterday, another two and a half percent down today. The reason, of course, is the concern over what's happening in the electoral process and the politics there. And it spread. Ibex in Madrid off two and a half. Athens down two and a third. The PSI 20 off two and a half percent. The Greek index, the, Ath the, sorry, the Athens index and the Spanish index. All and the Portuguese index. All off very sharply. Anna Stewart is with me to pull together the strands of this. And not only do, do we see Anna equities down, but we also see the bond market. We see the spreads uh, for um, Italian bonds over bonds rising as well. Yeah, that spread has really risen a lot, and borrowing costs are certainly up. The two-year bond yield in Italy has uh, reached 2.4% earlier today. That's actually the highest it's been in four years. The 10-year bond yield also up. And as you said, with the contagion in equities, we're seeing similar story, actually, in bond yields too. Spain, Greece, Italy, all having uh, increased bond yields there. Uh, so increased borrowing costs, Richard, and many, many people concerned. But let's remember, this wasn't as bad. You know, we weren't seeing bond yields at anywhere near the levels of the financial crisis. That said, the central bank governor, in an annual report today, came out with a bit of a warning. Let me read it to you, because it was fairly interesting. He said, we are only ever a few short steps away from the very serious risk of losing the irreplaceable asset of trust and that is possibly what we were really seeing being traded today it's trust uh, Anna the the, mar the the president the Italian president said that he was concerned about the market going down the market even with a technocrat president a uh, prime minister in the short term, with a technocrat cabinet being presented, is still showing concern. What is the concern over? Well, the concern is far beyond what's happening today, even, Richard. You know, what's happening now is people very concerned that what we will see is fresh elections, which ultimately could be a de facto vote on whether Italy stays in the EU. This is being seen by <coughs> investors in the worst case scenario as the potential quitterly, as some people are calling it. So it's the stability of the economy, it's the stability of the politics, and it's the contagion effect that you could get from Italy throughout the Eurozone. This is the third biggest country in the Eurozone. This is much worse than Greece, for example. Anna Stewart, who'll watch this for the rest of the week with along with us, Anna, thank you, to Delia Gallagher, who joins me from Rome, where the new, te the new president, uh, prime minister, I beg your pardon, assuming he gets con um, a vote of confidence, has been presenting his cabinet. No, no unusual or unexpected candidates, we are told. But, uh, Delia, if the goal was to restore market credibility, and soothe markets, it hasn't worked. Yes, Richard, and let me tell you what has happened just now in a dramatic turn of events. We were waiting for the new prime minister designate to come out of his meeting with President Mattarella and give us the names of those ministers. It was due to be a fairly pro forma event. Instead, the uh, prime minister designate went out of the presidential palace through a back door. The spokesperson for the president came out in what can only be described as a press scrum. Nobody had ever seen anything like it before at the presidential palace and said the two will be meeting tomorrow. This has just happened about a half an hour ago, Richard, and everybody is trying to make sense of what it means. It was supposed to be very straightforward. This is the interim president appointed, uh, interim prime minister appointed by the president. He should have had his list ready and come out today. Could just be a blip and they meet tomorrow and we still get a list of ministers. However, I must tell you that analysts are already talking about the fact that this could signify that the president wants to move ahead without this interim government to even further, more quickly uh, to the elections, i.e. in July. Needs to be 30, uh, 60 days anyway uh, from the moment the elections are called. But this is another dramatic uh, change of scene, as if we could handle another one, in which we're no longer talking about possibly elections after the summer or early next year, but potentially, we may know tomorrow, uh, even as soon as July, Richard. Um, the markets are going to take this very badly. If there is to be an earlier election, they were already disconcerted at the possibility of an election in Q1 
of 19. If it's July, when the anger, or whatever, later this year, when the anger and resentment over the rejection of Five Star and League's nominations, uh, well, we're in a different ballgame here, aren't we? That's right. Sentiment is very high on both sides. We're seeing some protests being scheduled now for Saturday. It's a holiday here on Saturday. It's the Festival of the Republic. It's supposed to be a time of unity for Italy. Instead, we're seeing the Five Star calling for protests and so on. Obviously, a lot of debate between those who are siding with the president's decision uh, not to accept the proposed government from the Five Star in the League and, and those uh, who are uh, very fervently against it. As you were saying earlier, Richard, the question of the election becoming a referendum then on a potential exit from the euro only increases. Delia, thank you. When you hear more, uh, we'll talk a bit later on about what's, what's going on. Uh, Delia Gallagher joining us from Rome. We return to New York, where the market is now down 429 points. Um, Maggie, it seems to be bouncing around, and in the absence of any any new information it seems to have found somewhat of a bottom yeah but 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 holds on richard i mean i think this is going to be a pretty rocky afternoon listen all of the things we're talking about are just hard to quantify right there, there's there's not a sort of logical uh, prognosis you can give when you're talking about this sort of uncertainty in in a country the size of italy when you're talking about trade disputes with china I want to talk about some of the some of what's leading the market down today, and that is the banking sector. When we saw the fallout starting to happen to Italy, you immediately had investors looking for safe havens. That pushed the yield down on the bonds here in the U.S. Now, that may be welcome news if you're holding a lot of debt or you're looking at borrowing costs, but when you're bank investors, right, that higher yield um, was going to be helpful for their profits going forward. So now that's putting some pressure on that banking system. So that's part of what's leading the way down if you look at some of the biggest losers. But there's no doubt that volatility back and especially when you're talking about accelerated timeline um, in Europe and all the debt that's outstanding that's just going to contribute to uh, the prospect of another summer of discontent where right. Europe, Europe's future you know is hanging the balance and that that doesn't even cover some of the other risks we just talked about when it comes to trade let's